morning, everyone. Um, some of you I'm familiar with for attending my many field sessions here. Um, some of you I've seen in the job alliance and they work closely with. So it's a pleasure meeting all of you, um, especially in a school that has just graduated many cohorts of many of DPs. So I'm honored to be here. So once again, I'm Alfonso Maguba, I'm the DP coordinator at East School Manila. And the, today's session will be all about um, the approaches to learning and the diploma program. So to start off, so in this workshop, we'll be looking at the following objectives. You'll be familiar with the ATLs and how it's seen in your own program. We'll also navigate the Program Resource Center, especially for those who are new to the program, this Resource Center will be your best friend um, as you try and make sense of the Diploma Program and also the command terms and the jargon, as well as the approaches to learning as well. We'll also, at the end of this session, we'll also create a continuum wherein we'll see how the ATLs are developed from grade 11 to 12, and how we can also ensure that these ATLs are explicitly seen inside our classroom. Now, as a teacher or as a coordinator coming from the outside, I don't wish to impose myself upon you, but I also, but I wish for us to have a conversation of what the approaches to learning are inside our classrooms and inside our institution. Most especially with the school year coming along and we want us, we want to be reflective as possible. So moving forward, these are some of the professional capabilities that I hope we'll be able to show and practice throughout this session. So I want to take, to take a look at it first. So now we start off with our professional inquiry. Now when we look at this session, it's important for us to think about the inquiries that we'll be launching in this morning. And some of those inquiries will really help us think about the approaches to learning inside our classroom and in our program. So some of those inquiries we we'll focus on what we consider as effective teaching. How is effective teaching seen? Earned and applied in my subject or group and the student. What, we, what does the I consider as effective teaching? And how will I be mindful of the ADLs in my subject? Yes, I develop my subject. Okay, so some of these questions I hope we'll be able to answer as we move along in our workshop. Okay. Now, for the first activity, I want this to be in a reflective mood first. So look at the questions on the board on the wall, and reflect on the time when you were a student. How were you taught? How were you assessed? How did you learn the best? So have a chat in your own table groups and think about these questions. Some of you might have been students way back in the 70s, 80s, 90s, and some just did it back in the early 2000s. So think about it. How were you taught? How were you assessed? How did you learn the best? Alright, cheers. So, I know that you're all having good conversations, meaningful conversations, reflecting on the time you were a student. I hope it brings back a lot of good memories. If not, here's another question for you. What did you consider most effective when you were a student and you're looking at the teacher and how they thought? What were some things that made that teacher an effective teacher for you? Would anyone like to share? So what did you consider most effective when you were learning as a student? Um, you can share. Any brave soul would like to share something? What did you consider most effective when you were learning? Yes, sir. Um, when, when I was a student, um, it was, uh, well, I was speaking for myself. Yeah. Um, well, it was very effective when the, uh, when the class was a bit teacher-centered because okay. 
Uh, I, I, I was just listened to my teacher and then explain to me concept, for example, in history. Mm -hmm. And then if there's something that I don't get, I just simply ask. Okay. Uh, uh, it's because before, sometimes when the teacher makes it like student center, they mm -hmm. will divide us into groups and make us do role play mm -hmm. or or reporting. After mm -hmm. the after after that, I was we were uh, left having like what. What are we supposed to learn in this whole experience? Yes. And the teacher will just repeat the things that we just reported. Mm -hmm. So, in my, in my context, I think it was um, it, it was um, effective for the teacher to speak and just for me to listen. Okay. Thank you. Ma'am, you wanted to share something? Uh, in my case, I remember my Tommy can now explain what the teacher is. It's teacher centered in the first practice. So the teacher will demonstrate how much teacher is done. Yeah. But we practice. Mm -hmm. So that's how I do it. So practice. You have the teacher centered approach. Anybody else would like to share? Yes, sir. I feel when we are, I feel it's most effective if we are allowed to use our creativity mm -hmm. when, it, when it comes to project making. Mm -hmm. So uh, our teacher would just model one exemplar, mm -hmm. but if the teacher allows us to be more creative mm -hmm. and how to present it, it gives us more liberty mm -hmm. to show how, how much I do learn in that subject. Thank you so much for your responses. I believe that there is that there is a difference between what how we were taught in the past and how and how we are teaching our students today. Which leads us to our next question. Who are our students? How do they learn best? What are their strengths and their challenges? What skills do you think they need in the workforce? Especially these are the students who are in the next four, five, six years will be the leaders of um, the industries. So I want you guys to have another chat in your group and start thinking about the questions that we have on the board. So who are our students? The savior stu students, the grade 11 and 12 right now. So how do they learn? What are their strengths and their challenges? Okay, teachers, so that we don't spend a lot of time sitting, you'll see on your table some post-its, and on that post-it, I'd like you to write down your answer to the third bullet point. What skills in Savior School students need in the workforce? Apart from the skills that we have here on the board, let's try and be a little bit more specific. What specific skills do these students, do our students need in the workforce, or what skills should we impart to them as they as we prepare them for college and for the future? So I'll give you um, so I'll give you about five minutes to do this, and then on that post it, try and categorize it according to the different ETLs we have here on the board. So just post it there, just post it on the wall. So thank you for doing that very quick exercise. I was going through the different skills that you identified, and some of them I can also relate to with my students. I especially like the one on mastering a specific language. Um, I believe the Chinese, the Chinese teachers identify that, and also the languages teachers. Because in my school, we also have the same problem of mastering languages, especially Filipino in our context. Um, I also like one uh, skill that was identified, inventiveness, especially um, in this century where we're now in the fourth industrial revolution, where we have technology and uh, learning 
um, working together, being synergistic. So it, it involves actually our students being inventive, innovative, creative in the way they approach different learning challenges. Now, now that we've identified what our students need and also the skills that our students, uh, the, the skills that we need to impart to our students, we've also identified like how we thought as a, as students in the past and what our students need now. It's time for us to really start thinking about how best our students learn. And the IB has created that. Um, that resource for us to use, which is the approaches to learning. Now, in today's session, we're going to go on a learning journey. Um, you'll be divided, or you're, you're already divided, according to your subject groups. And I've created different resources for you to access online. Um, that's why you'll be needing your gadgets for this one. There are different resources that talk about the skills students need in the workplace. There will be some articles and videos that will talk about the ID case studies on what these skills look like inside the classroom. There will be some articles talking about um, how to show these skills, these skills or exhibit these skills in your own subject areas. Now for this learning journey, you will visit the learning stations and every 10 minutes, I will ring a bell, or I will clap my hands, and you will proceed to the next station. So read the article, or evaluate the artifact, then identify the different skills that you see there. Post, write it on a post-it, and post it on the wall. If you already see a similar skill as well, you can um, just place a star on it. You can also do a jigsaw, and you can divide your um, group to look at different stations simultaneously, and then share. So if you feel that there are some skills that you already wrote or you read a while ago, you can visit the wall and see if should I write that skill again, or do I save the post-it and just put a star on it. If you feel that you're almost done engaging with the artifacts and the um, articles that you're reading, maybe on the post-it you can write down the specific skills that your students need in your respective subjects. This will be really helpful later on for our last activity. So have a discussion in your group. What are the skills? What skills do we need to show or what skills do our students need to have, for example, in history, in business management, or in a, in a more broader context for individuals and societies, the sciences, mathematics, art, the core. Okay. So have a discussion in your group. What skills do they need? Or what skills should we be teaching them? in our own subject areas or subject groups. So let's do that for another 15 minutes. So in your own subject groups, have you identified your skills already? You can differentiate it, like self-management, what does it look like in math? Social skills, what does it look like in your subject? Research, thinking, community skills, etc. So come up with the list. All right. So I've had some interesting conversations with some of your um, with some of the teachers here, and I also do acknowledge the challenges that you face, especially now that we're focused on building skills while at the same time meeting content. So when we start thinking about the approaches to learning, it's really important to think that 
this is what the IV considers So when we think about the IV approaches to um, learning, the IV considers these ATLs as the skills that our students need. These are the skills are not something that the IV just magically came up with, but it was based off um, years and decades of research. It was also based off um, case studies, examples that they've seen in their own schools, pilot programs. And so um, these skills are something that we have to pay special attention to. It also addresses the question of how teachers can influence students as opposed to just merely teaching content. And I know that this is something that it brings a lot of contention and provocation. Like we're supposed to be teaching skills, but how about the content? How do we marry the two? How do we bal how do we create that balance? So there is this is something that you and your subject groups plus your coordinators will have as you prepare for the new school year. Okay? So the ATLs considering it as an effective teaching um, as an effective method of teaching, it encourages teachers to be teachers of learning as well as teachers of content. It also encourages them to create strategies to develop learning, to engage in meaningful inquiries, especially when we look at the approaches to teaching. The approaches to teaching require us to come up with um, inquiries that are meaningful based on conceptual understanding promote responsible action and the like. It also requires us teachers to develop a set of skills of learning for life. As the IB mentions that all teachers and students are lifelong learners. So learning never stops. And as teachers, we also have to build our own skill set as well. And most importantly, it means that we have to develop skills that can be used in multiple contexts. Most of the time I've encountered, or in my own situation, in the school, in the keys, it's always, I'm a science teacher, so it's, I'm only focused on science. But when you look at these ATLs, it's not ATLs for individuals and societies, ATLs for math, but it's ATLs for the entire subject. So you have to really think about those ATLs, and what does it look like in so group one, two, three, four, five, six, and the core? And how can we integrate or how can we collaborate so that these ATLs can be um, present in our own classrooms and in our own teaching? And most especially in the way we plan our, our units. So with these in mind, let's do one last activity or the second to the last activity. I want everybody to stand up. So in this activity, we have entitled, or it's titled, The Mix with the World. So we have the mix question, where we discuss with somebody other than the table group. The question for two minutes. Then we discuss the next question, the whist question, for another two minutes. And then a real question for the last two minutes. So this time, please find a partner. Be it new, be it old, be it from the other group, etc. Go find your partner first. If there is an odd number of teachers, it's okay if you're in the trio, it's fine. Alright? Please don't be with your subject groups for now. Go look for somebody else. Subject groups. exercise? Anybody would like to share? How did you find this exercise of mixing, whisking, and whirling different questions and learning from your peers? Especially when you have a diverse group of new and old teachers alike. Anyone would like to share? Yes, ma'am. I found it awkward. 
sent a survey um, asking you about some questions about the ADLs. And based off that survey, I was able to gather some of the questions that you asked or that you have about the ADLs. So is there a better way on how we can measure self-management skills? Is there a better way for us to measure, or is there a way for us to measure self-management skills? I think the question, or the answer to this question is, before we can really think about how we measure self-management skills, is first we need to model it, right? Um, self-management means that we have to be on time, practice time management, be mindful of the development of our lessons. So this is just an idea from, from me, that self-management skills, because of its abstract nature, because it has something to do with behavior, um, we need to be able to model it first. So that when we have established that routine of self-management amongst our students, then we can have that conversation with our own faculty, like, what rubric can we use so that, or what rubric can we create so that when we assess self-management skills at grade 11 and at grade 12, we have something tangible to show. Okay. If anybody has something else to share or has an idea for this question, I mean, we're opening the floor for that. Question number two, how could we as teachers best develop these APLs for our students? I mean, it's the volume is content that we need to cover in a limited amount of time. In my context, we also share that same problem. It's a universal problem amongst all schools, IB and non-IB, deaf ed and non-deaf ed schools. But the IB says that in order for you to do all of this, you need to have a conversation of vertical and horizontal collaboration and articulation. Start looking at the content of each subject and see where can we integrate so that there is, because for sure there will be an overlap in our lessons. Be it as, be it as vague as math, connecting with languages or individuals and societies, we have to be mindful of subjects and integration. Because you will see that if we are able to integrate, then we can share content, then we can share the burden of teaching. Okay, but don't let's not limit ourselves to just sticking with our own subject. Okay? Number three, how to balance the desire to promote independent learning in a class of twenty while ensuring full coverage of full oh, sorry, full coverage and sufficient understanding of prescribed syllabus and burning out students. Um, I believe in your next session you'll have the approaches to teaching. And this is something that we that you should look into as well. But for me, I prefer using one way that I was able to tackle contact, especially in history, is 
to look back at the specific approaches to teaching, which is inquiry learning. Inquiry learning has helped me a lot because it gives me the opportunity to pass the content to the students, for them to research on their own, to, for them to conduct their own experiments. And one, um, one model of inquiry learning that I found really useful is Kath Murdoch's inquiry learning. Um, you should look into that model. Um, it's really helpful and there are a lot of, and as well there are a lot of resources that would help you so that instead of having days on the end of lectures and um, debates and discussions, you can look at how inquiry learning gives the students the power to engage in content meaningfully and create their own understanding. Last question, in terms of conceptual understanding, what are examples of concepts that can be reinforced throughout numerous subjects? If you look at your course guide, you will see that there are conceptual underpinnings for each subject. These concepts are universal. And if you look at the, and if you will just place them all on a table, you will see that the concepts of one subject is present in the arts, languages, um, individuals and societies, mathematics and sciences. Now, the way for you to be able to um, integrate those concepts is for you to collaborate and plan with, it, with your team and with the different subject areas around that concept. There are a lot of resources on, conce on building a conceptual learning framework or building a classroom or a lesson that is rooted on concepts. Okay, and this is something that you can do when you have your approaches to teaching workshop paper. Okay. Apart from that, does anyone have, is anyone does anyone have questions or something they'd like to share also um, in terms of answering some of these questions? Amongst the senior teachers, maybe you have some insights as well. Yes, sir. Uh, maybe uh, one of the challenges uh, that we have as IB teachers mm -hmm. is that uh, many of the uh, suggested activities that were shown in the video mm -hmm. earlier, um, like uh, project based learning, uh, design thinking, a lot of those are, um, I think it's easier to have those in lower grade levels where there are more. Time for them to explore, and there's more time for them to actually uh, do those kind of activities. Uh, the struggle with the uh, IB uh, always is that uh, many of the activities that we do um, tend to be more leaning towards the, the actual assessments that we have to do. So therefore, many of those tend not to be collaborative, and um, a lot of those tend to be very, uh, very much individual tasks. So. Um, and uh, so the challenge has always been how to be actually apply those things that we learned about, you know, design thinking, project based learning, etc., and make them really fit for IT. So that I think has been the struggle uh, you know, for the past uh, few years that we've been exposed to uh, these new approaches. Is it a question? So therefore, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, uh, maybe what we could uh, actually what we need is uh, maybe more uh, concrete ways, or I don't know, for uh, the teachers to like concrete activities that we could really try that uh, would, uh, yeah, I mean for grades uh, that well, because uh, practically speaking, we're already uh, swamped with a lot yes. of uh, activities that make them master the individual, you know, the individual tasks and skills that we have to do. So something to think about, um, planning is really important. Um, the IB really puts emphasis on that. Um, and it's something that you should look in, uh, that should be deliberate. In my experience, when it comes to planning, it's a, we go, th we have the plan of what we're going to do. But our coordinator also tells us, maybe instead of doing this individual activity, you could do this collaborative activity instead. So maybe devote a day wherein you can have collaborative activities 
that build up on a spark, on a particular skill or um, or a content. Okay. So moving forward. So I know majority of you have already done your audit or you've already used the ATL self-reflection tool that will be easy set. So you don't you don't need to do this anymore. And we did the activity on what skills do either you and your students excel in. So a while ago when I asked each subject group to come up with a list of particular skills and your least approaches to learning, you already identified them. So now we're going to do a whole faculty challenge, which entails um, which entails everybody's everybody's um, cooperation and collaboration. So, what do the ATLs look like at grade eleven and at grade twelve? How would you introduce, consolidate, and assess each skill in grade eleven and grade twelve? And so, your task as we end this workshop is. For, you to, for us to create a vertical continuum of how these ATLs look at grade 11 and grade 12, and then create a horizontal progression of goals on introducing the ATLs. I created this, this is the sample of what I did. So thinking skills, these are, these are just um, vague and general statements. So if you take a look at it, so these are just some ways. And in order for you to do this as a whole faculty, I created this document. It's a Google document that you can access. In that um, document, grade 11, grade 12, then the different skills. And then in your own subject groups, start writing down those identified skills. And then I'll share this with your DTC as a working document. So that when you plan out with them with your DPC, this is a document that you can um, refer to from time to time as well. It's also a document that you can use throughout the school year and develop and refine further. If you find that the document is a bit slow because of all the anonymous panels and koalas, you can create a different document and then just simply copy and paste it later on. Also be mindful when you plan on introducing these skills in the progression of your subject. Alright, teachers, um, I believe my time is done with you. But I will still stay um, according to your organize according to the organizers. You have snacks over there, so this could be a working break. Um, on, on my end, I'd like to say thank you to everyone who participated today. Um, it was a meaningful workshop. I hope you can learn something or pick up some things. And at the same time, um, I hope you see you also in the different job lives and workshops in the future. So thank you. I'll still be here. I'm happy. Thank you very much.